I don't know how well you guys can see this right now, but this whole floor right here has been discolored. And that happened because I was a little bit lazy and didn't want to fix my fridge. So what happened with my freezer right here was leaking. And over a couple of months, it did some permanent damage to my floor. In fact, my floor is cracking a little bit under the fridge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix a leaking freezer and hopefully stop any more damage from happening. We're not gonna change the floor because that's gonna take a little bit more time and a little bit more effort and I gotta look up how to do that. So let's get started and understand what the problem actually is with the freezer. For this job, you don't need many tools. All you'll need is a screwdriver, a heat gun, or you could use a hair dryer and somewhere to store the screws nicely. I recommend using something like this metal tray. It's magnetic, so it'll make sure that your screws don't roll away even if the tray gets knocked over. Now we have to move the fridge. To get the strength I need, I'm gonna have a nice cup of tea to give me that energy so I can move this fridge. Let's go. From the surface, the damage doesn't look too bad. However, we do have a lot of cracks in the wooden panel. Initially, I thought we were gonna need a screwdriver to remove the panels in the fridge. However, my fridge requires sockets. I tried using a six millimeter socket and it was too small and a seven millimeter was too big. However, the hole I have in the screwdriver for the different bits was the perfect size. So I just went with it. So make sure you guys double check what your fridge requires and don't just follow this video because I didn't know clearly and I had to go get some more tools. So I'm gonna unpackage this metal tray and then we're gonna get started removing the back panel to see what's going on. When you unscrew anything, sometimes you'll notice that some screws look a little bit different than the others. And that's because they have a specific purpose. In my case, there was only one screw and that was the very middle screw in the panel that had a washer of some sort in it. So I need to make sure that the middle screw goes back in the middle of the panel. Once you've unscrewed the back panel, the last thing you need to do is remove all the clips and wires holding it in place. In my case, I had one clip in the very center of the panel that I needed to undo with a pair of pliers or you can use your fingernails very carefully. And I need to remove the power cord that was holding the plastic in place at the top of the panel. The reason why we opened the fridge was to look at the drain pipe from the freezer. In my fridge, it's this black pipe right here. Any condensation from the freezer is supposed to go down this pipe into a plastic tray. You might have noticed that there's no drain line coming out of the freezer and that's because this fan right here is supposed to evaporate the water from the plastic tray. You can see down there we have some water marks meaning there was water here at some point but since it's bone dry there's probably a clog somewhere else. Another reason why we opened up the back was to see if the clog was actually in the pipe itself. So mine didn't appear to have any obstructions and that was easy to check because it's very open. This means there's probably an obstruction somewhere inside the freezer, which is what I expected. But we did our due diligence by confirming there's nothing wrong in the back. So now we'll move on to the front. Okay, so now that we're done with the back, we're gonna get started with the front. One thing we will need that we didn't have before is a tray. Something waterproof that'll hold ice and water because we are gonna be taking out some ice and water. So now, let's get started emptying the freezer. Okay, breaking the ice is a simple process. You can do it one of two ways. You can use your fist and just pound on the ice, creating cracks into it and then you can break the ice that way, or you can use a tool of some sort, but be gentle, because this is all plastic. And then once the ice is broken, gather up all the pieces so you don't make a mess on your floor. Look at how thick that ice is. Some of this ice got really thick, which means I should have cleaned it up way sooner. I'm gonna go throw this in the sink and I'll be right back to grab the rest of it. On the cover of everything in the back of my freezer, there was a nice little drawing showing you exactly what to do with your screwdriver to undo the cover for each of the sensors or plugs. So with my flathead screwdriver, I just needed to follow the directions that were given to me in these photos. The back of your freezer is just a thin layer of plastic, so if you can't get it out or can't reach, just push in the sides and you'll crack the ice there, and then you can fold it a little bit so your hands can get around the edges. One thing I forgot to do was remove the middle part, but that was easy as well. All I did was use a little bit of force, and I was able to undo it with my screwdriver, and then the back panel will easily come out. This dark spot in the ice is the freezer's drain. 
As you guys can see, there's a big sheet of ice covering it, just under the radiator. And the radiator itself has water dripping from it. So that's how the sheet of ice was made. So what we need to do is thaw the drain out so that water can go through and our freezer won't be leaking anymore. Simplest way for us to get rid of some of this is to use a kitchen knife or a screwdriver and just bash it away and then wipe it off. This will be effective, but won't get rid of all of the ice and you need to be extra careful not to scratch up the plastic that's in the back of your freezer. Once the bigger chunks of ice are removed, we now need to get rid of the ice clogged in the freezer. So we're gonna grab our heat gun and melt the remaining ice with the heat. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a hairdryer instead. A couple of things to be careful about. Don't continuously blast heat. The back panel is plastic and you can work plastic with too much heat. Also be careful not to burn yourself. Some of the parts can get really hot and if you actually touch them while doing this, you can burn yourself pretty badly. Even though thawing the ice isn't particularly hard, it does take a long time. It took me a few hours to get all the ice melted, but it was definitely worth it. To test that all the ice is gone, we can pour some water in the back of the drain to see if it goes down. To check even further, you can open up the back panel again and look for water at the other end of the drain pipe. I ended up checking the back panel to see if the water did go through the drain and I forgot to record it, so take my word guys, I checked both ends of the pipe and made sure water was at either end. I recommend you guys do this as well because that way you're verifying that the water actually went through the pipe and didn't get stuck anywhere or wasn't clogged further down. Now with the ice melted and the drain unclogged, we need to put everything back together. But first we'll have to clean up the water from the melted ice. Once that's done, we're going to put back the back panel and pull the wires through. One is for the sensor and the other is for an ice maker. My freezer has a harness ready for an ice maker, but since I don't have one, I can put this wire any which way. With the necessary wires pulled through, we now have to screw in the back panel. There are four screws that go around the back panel, one in the top left, one in the top right, one in the bottom left, and one in the bottom right. And once that's done, our back panel is installed. I started putting the food back in when I realized I forgot to put the plastic cover for the middle. This wasn't a big deal because I can put the plastic cover in without having to remove anything, so no harm, no foul. And I'm sure you guys can hear this on camera, but we finally fixed the fridge. So the freezer has been thawed and there's no more ice obstructing the drain pipe. Uh, we even tested it out with some water and I didn't show this on camera, but I even opened up the back panel, put my fingers in there and, sh and saw that it was wet. Uh, so we did fix the freezer. So it, to my knowledge, we did fix the freezer. However, if I did mess anything up and I realized I made a mistake, I'll update the video so that way you guys can see what the mistake was and how I attempted to fix it. That being said, the freezer's fixed. One thing I will say though, it took a really long time to thaw the ice. I'm talking about over an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, just thawing the ice. So if anyone tells you it's a quick job, it definitely is not. However, it's very easy to do and just takes a lot of time. So if you guys have a Saturday, you guys are bored, maybe there's a snowstorm or COVID lockdown, you guys can save yourself like 200 bucks and fix your own freezers. That being said, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys smash the like button and subscribe, bell notifications turned on, so you guys get my next video right when it's released. And if you guys want to see more content like me, I have a gaming YouTube channel, so you guys can check that out. YouTube.com slash Kyle Unleashed, where I do a lot of gaming content. And right now I'm playing a lot of Valorant, so if you guys want to see some tutorials on how to play Valorant or how to improve as a Sova, which is what I play, make sure you guys check out that gaming channel. And if you guys want to see any of these tutorials done live, make sure you guys check me out on twitch.tv slash Kyle Unleashed. I usually play a lot of Valorant, but I can always answer any other questions that you guys might have. And if you guys have any questions that you need an urgent response or you want to get a hold of me when I'm not streaming, make sure you guys join our Discord server. I'll put the link in the description below. We have an awesome community for wonderful individuals. So if you put a question there and I don't answer it, some other guys in the community would definitely be more than happy to help. We do everything from tech to Valorant to games to even soccer. So make sure you guys join. It's an awesome community for wonderful individuals. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.